Kutinandam. In this video today, I just wanted to share with you all a question which I'm sure many people would like to ask and something that I know many people are curious about, which is why of all paths that I could have taken, why Hinduism? And why is it that I decided to become a Hindu monk? So from a very young age, from the age of perhaps five or six, the moment that I heard of the concept of God, something was ignited in me, which I can say was truly the start of my seeking. I had a curiosity of understanding why was I born? What is the purpose of my existence? Even from such a young age, this curiosity was there. Of what is the purpose of life itself? And if there is a higher intelligence that created this life, what is its purpose? And then what created it? So all of these questions were there. So um, I kind of immersed myself into... Um, into understanding the nature of the universe and the nature of God and the nature of existence the only way that I knew how back then. So I was raised as a Christian, as a Roman Catholic. So it was through going to church and listening to our priests talk about God, um, talk about us as, um, you know, how we, how we should relate to God. So um, my understanding growing up was that uh, God was a separate entity. God was somewhere, I don't really know where, but somewhere. And um, my way of connecting to God was through prayer. Um, and I, uh, the way I was, uh, or my understanding was that if I wanted something, uh, God was in control of his creation. God was in control of my existence and the existence of the whole world. So if something went good, it was because of God's grace. If something went bad, it was again um, because God was controlling it. So um, often my prayers were very fearful um, I didn't know how to connect with this God. I wanted to connect with this God, but I didn't quite understand how to. So do I, you know, do I say certain words? Will certain, you know, will certain phrases, will certain words please him and put me in his good books? You know, if, you know, there's certain things I say or do, will it put me in his bad books? And that was very much actually taught that um, you can, in fact, be a sinner in God's eyes. So one of the things that I went through, um, which was taught to me as like a normal part of, of this religion was, there are certain things that you should do and there's certain things that you shouldn't do. Um, for example, um, and it's, it's like a basic principle of life, but that one of the things that you shouldn't do is lie. But if you do lie, then you're a sinner. And if you have lied, then um, you're kind of, uh, as a part of um, Catholicism, um, you should be going to confession, to confess your sins to a priest. That priest then absolves you of this sin. And then you're again uh, put back in the good grace of God. So... Um, at one point in time, uh, I kind of gave up on the whole idea of God. I kind of gave up on the whole relating with God simply because my life became so painful. And no matter how much I was praying to God, it wasn't getting better. No matter how much I was asking for help, there was no relief to this pain. There was no relief to this depression that I was suffering from, from this anxiety that I was suffering from. Um, this separate entity, I felt, it just did not have eyes for me. This separate entity didn't care for me. Obviously, I'm, you know, I remember even begging <laughs> for certain things, um, for help in certain things, with certain things, and 
that help was never there. So I kind of uh, put a pin in seeking. I brushed it off. I set it aside and I moved on to just, you know, carrying on with life, you know, living um, a life where I wasn't praying anymore, where um, I was just going on, you know, living the way I'm sure many people do, um, unconsciously. And um, it was only after finding Swamiji, it was only after um, listening to his teachings that this seeking was ignited again with such ferociousness and such passion because for the first time ever I could understand truth being spoken. Um, and funnily enough, it was only after finding Swamiji that the words that I had been listening to, these teachings of Jesus <laughs> that I had been trying to wrap my head around, which I could never really understand, um, they made sense. It's so funny that a Hindu guru <laughs> made the words of, you know, a um, a, a Christian uh, teacher um, click inside of me, make utmost sense for the first time ever. And um, it was only after understanding the concept of oneness of listening to Swamiji speak even from discourses from you know 2008 2009 which is what I was first looking at when I found him listening to teachings from the Shiva Sutras listening to Swamiji talk about oneness um, that God is so interconnected with his creation that there is no separation that everything that I was seeking for is actually inside of me, that everything that I was seeking for is so intrinsically a part of me. Separation all of a sudden, like being separated from this intelligence, which it's making my heart beat. I'm not thinking about making my heart beat. There's something much higher that's, there's an intelligence that's working that is making this function, that is making this body function so beautifully that you know, the trees are growing, the seasons come and go in such perfect um, order. We have the planets, you know, um, orbiting around with perfection. So how could there be a God that has created all of this and he's not a part of it? Or I don't, I mean, I say he because that's how I connect with God. It was always... Um, it was always a masculine energy but let's say it let's use the word it how can God be separate how can it be separate from its creation that whole understanding became it, it just seemed ridiculous and for the first time ever I started experiencing um, joy in seeking I started experiencing joy in connecting with um, with this divine entity and it's not that it's divine and I'm not I'm also divine because I'm so intrinsically a part of it I'm it's I'm its child you know I am a child of this God I'm a child of of this creator um, so I went from, you know, thinking that I'm a sinner and that I have to do certain things to be um, accepted by God to understanding that he's always with me. He always was. He can't not be a part of me. Um, it was such a beautiful realization and it, it made everything else make sense. Um, so naturally I decided that, okay, um, I mean, not, it wasn't even a decision. It was kind of like a, um, a shift that happened in me where I knew that, okay, status quo life is no longer there for me. Um, I have a deeper calling. I have a, a higher purpose in my life than, you know, getting married, having kids. 
um, the world needs to know about this. The world needs to understand that their true nature, their divine nature. So it was just natural that I um, that I followed this particular path, this path that um, that makes so much sense. Um, and it's a celebration. Life now is a utmost celebration. Understanding that everything is divine. Um, moment to moment you're living in that divinity moment to moment you're living um, in that celebration there's no more fear that you know you can do something wrong as such um, there's no fear that uh, God will turn his back on you it's all within you that power is um, all a part of you so um, For any sincere seekers that are out there, um, I feel that you also can have the clarity that I've um, that I've received. I mean, you don't have to become a Hindu monk. You don't have to take that kind of a leap. But have a look into Swamiji's teachings. Have a um, have a look into you know, maybe not even Swamiji's teachings. You don't have to necessarily look at that, although I highly recommend it. Um, start opening up your mind. Start reading. Um, we have a wealth of uh, literature. Hinduism has a wealth of literature which speaks about this oneness, which speaks about this um, this connectedness. in the Vedas, in the um, Agamas, in the Bhagavad Gita. Pick up any one of these uh, books, pick up any one of these texts. You start to experience your divinity through these words, through these techniques, whether it's through meditation. Um, just by reading the Bhagavad Gita, um, which was one of the first things, one of the first introductions I had to Hinduism, um, not really understanding what Hinduism was. It resonated with me so much. It gave tremendous clarity and um, it, it, <laughs> there were a lot of, uh, how can I say, um, uh, blank blank points which I I didn't understand there were certain things that I didn't understand about um, the nature of the universe or God and it filled them so beautifully so um, start reading these books start reading um, you know any of this wealth of information and see how you start having your own personal clicks. See how it it, um, it adds to your understanding of what is God and what are you ultimately. So um, I think I've rambled on a little bit. <laughs> so um, I'll cut this short for now. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions about um, about Hinduism, about um, you know, even recommendations on some literature that you can start reading um, or some videos that you can start watching. Um, I'm more than happy to connect with you. I'm more than happy to recommend um, as much as I can. I'm happy to share with um, the things that have resonated the most with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not